Want to learn how to sew but don't know where to start? Well, you're in the right place. So these are some of the supplies that you're going to need when you're first starting. Thread and some bobbin, some extra needles, a seam ripper, marking pen, or some chalk if you have darker material. Um, a long ruler, a clear one is nice to have. Measuring tape, cutting scissors, or a rotary cutter, um, and then some pins. These right here are just a little extra supplies that are not necessary, they're just nice to have. So these clips I like to use instead of my pins, and then I like um, these little scissors and this measuring gauge. So your thread. Uh, when I first started, I really didn't uh, pay much attention to the thread I was getting. I was just sewing with whatever I had or whatever was cheapest, um, but I feel like it does kind of make a difference. So the one that I like to use now is this Gutterman 100% uh, polyester and you'll want to pick up some bobbins if your machine doesn't come with um, any and i'll show you how to spin the thread onto your bobbin needles you're gonna want to have extra needles lying around you probably will break some just because you're new and getting used to your machine so you're gonna want to have extra just so you're not in the middle of a project and um, have to go run and get some more so as you can see here, there's different sizes. It goes from um, your thinner material up to your thicker material. And then if you're working with a uh, stretchy material, you're going to want to get um, a jersey ballpoint needle for those materials. Seam ripper. Unfortunately, this guy will become your best friend. You're going to be making a lot of mistakes as a new um, sewer, which I mean, I still use this all the time and I've been sewing for a few years now. Um, this will help you when you you know make a mistake and you need to unstitch it and then uh, restitch so this you'll need a marking pin so you're going to want this um it's a disappearing ink so once you wash it it'll come out of your fabric it won't stay there but um when you're marking to cut things or like marking something on your pattern you're going to want something like this or for your darker material you can use um chalk this will wash away also, but this just helps mark because you won't be able to see the pin markings on darker material. So your ruler, you're going to want something that's kind of long and see-through. This will help when you're cutting out your patterns. Your measuring tape, this will help when you are trying to figure out which size pattern you will need. You'll also need a good pair of scissors, something to cut with. Um, just remember that when you do get your good pair, you don't want to cut anything other than your fabric because it will ruin them and then they won't work as well. Or you can use a rotary cutter, which is nice. Um, if you are going to use a rotary cutter, you'll need a cutting mat. So these two actually are cutting mats. As you can see, this one has been used a lot. I don't really use this one anymore, but for a long time I used this one. It looks like it's an 18 by 12. Um, it's kind of on the smaller side, but I used this for a long time. Now I have this bigger one that's a 35 by 23. So just a cutting mat if you're going to be cutting with a rotary cutter because it will, you know, cut through. In your pins, you're going to want um, some pins to help hold your fabric in place when you're sewing. Um, or you can use these clips that I like to use. Um, they're super nice, but they don't always work. Like if you have like a weird angle that you have to um, put things together, you're going to want to have some of these um, to put it together. This measuring gauge, so this I like because when I first started, um, I couldn't really look and see what like an inch or, or like half an inch was. So this will help, especially when you're hemming, like a lot of the fat or a lot of the patterns will say um, fold it in a quarter inch, then fold it in again and half an inch. So this will help to know where you're folding. And your little scissors. So I like these to cut my threads after I've done, I'm done sewing. Um, and then it also helps as a seam ripper. You can use um, this to help cut when you've made a mistake also. So picking out your machine. I'm mostly a self-taught sewer. I'm not an expert, but this is just what's worked for me. So this is the sewing machine that I have here. It's a Brother. Um, I'll list here a few other uh, sewing machine brands that are good too that you can look into. 
So some of the things that I looked for in my machine were where my length and width were, my bobbin loader, if it had a measuring plate, if it had a threader for my needle, if it had a cutter, and the stitches. So my length and width is here and I like that it was digital so that was something that I looked for. The bobbin loader is here and all you have to do is open this up and put your bobbin in. There are some front loading ones which I kind of had trouble with doing so I like that this one was a drop in one and that's what I looked for. If you prefer the front loading one then that's something that you'll want to look for in your machine. Some machines have a plate here that shows you um, like an inch, five eighth inch so when you're sewing you can kind of guide your fabric here and know where you're sewing. So if that's something that you want, then that's something that you should look for. A lot of machines have an automatic threader, which is super nice to have. So if that's something that you want, then you should definitely look for that. A lot of machines also have an automatic cutter, which mine has just this little um, cutter down at the side where I could just put my thread through and cut it when I'm done sewing. Um, so that's also a nice feature to look for. So when you're first starting out, you really just need some basic stitches. You don't need anything fancy. I have a lot of stitches that my machine can do and it can even do letters, but you don't really need all that. I rarely use any of these. What I do use is the straight stitch, the zigzag stitch, um, this uh, lightning bolt stitch, and my buttonholes. I really don't use anything other than that. And as a beginner, those are really the only things, the only stitches that you need. Um, you don't really need anything fancy. One other thing that you want to consider when you're buying a machine is the weight. Um, if you're going to be hauling it back and forth, if you don't have like a, a designated area for your sewing machine, you're going to want something that's a little lighter. Or if it's not going to be moving too much, then it really doesn't matter, but it's just something to consider. Now we can go over our machine. Most machines are pretty similar. They have some differences, but for the most part, a lot of the things are similar. So first things first, our power um, is over here. This is where you turn it on and off. This is where you plug in your power cord, and this is where you plug in your pedal, your foot pedal. This over here is your hand crank. Um, this, this right here, when you move it, moves your needle up and down, just like this. And it's just important to know that that's there. Now we have where your thread sits, you put your thread right up here, and this right here is your bobbin threader. So you'll grab your bobbin here. As you can see, this one's clear, there's metal ones too. Um, I don't think it really matters which one you use, but you'll put it on top here, and then you'll take your thread, and usually there's instructions on how to on your machine, but you can also um, look at your manual to uh, figure that out. So you'll grab your thread and you'll thread it how they want you to. And then mine has this um, little nook here that I can just hook my um, thread in and then thread it. If your machine doesn't have this little hook here, you. As you can see here, um, there is little holes in here and you would put your thread in that hole and then you would put this on here and you would just hold your thread and then it will start threading. But since mine has, mine has it, just do it this way. You'll put your, your important part is you're gonna push this over just like this and then you'll start going and then I'll just start threading your bobbin. So this little wheel right here is your uh, tension. Usually I don't really move it much from four. Four is pretty, it was always a good tension. Um, the only time I really move it is when I'm making um, ruffles or gathering um, and that I usually just go up to like a nine or an eight. So a four is always good to keep it at. Okay, then you have your um, stitches here. So as you can see, there's numbers on uh, the stitches. So you would just, whatever stitch you wanna use, you would um, enter it here. 
So if I want to use a straight stitch, I would use one. If I wanted to use zigzag, I would go to four. Then you have your length and your width here. Um, as you can see, here is your length and you would only really increase that if you're using like a basting stitch or something like that. And then your width would be the width of your like zigzag. Um, and this will also come in handy when you're doing buttons. So my machine has a speed control, which is kind of nice when you're first starting out. Um, if you have it on slow, no matter how hard you press on your pedal, it will go slow and it won't speed up. Um, if you have it on fast, once you get a little bit more comfortable, then you can do it faster and then um, your fabric will be fed through and stitched faster. So as you can see, my machine has been well loved. The little pictures on here are kind of off, but I'll um, insert a picture of what this was before. So um, this is my back stitch, which you always want to do before and after you're done stitching. And then this is um, your needle, so it'll bring it down and it will bring it up. And then this is for when you're using like um, things without your pedal, you can use this to stitch, but I rarely use this. So this right here is my automatic needle threader, which is super nice to have. Um, and then how we went over this, it's my thread cutter, which is also nice. And then as you can see back here, there's a, um, the plate that has the measurements on it, which is nice when you are sewing. Um, if you want to sew a straight line, this will help you. Um, you just line up your fabric to whatever measurement you want and then keep an eye on that. So like I said previously, um, your bobbin um, loader can either be the drop-in kind or the front loading, um, which would be in here somewhere. Um, so mine is the drop-in one, so I would just push this out and this will come out and then you will put your bobbin in. And um, mine has instructions here, which I think most um, machines have some kind of instruction on there. So drop it in and then it shows me bring my thread in this way and then follow the arrow out and then it has a little um, razor here to cut it. And then I would just put this on and then I'd be ready to go. So there is a lever down over here and this is what brings your foot up and down um, when you're starting to sew and then when you're done sewing. Now that we know where our parts are, let's thread our machine. So you'll grab your thread and most machines kind of have a guide on where to do, how to do it. But for the most part, it's pretty similar. So you'll put it in here, you'll drop it down and bring it down into this curve. And then you're gonna wanna hook it into this little metal hook that's in here. Make sure that it's hooked onto that part there and then bring it down. There's also another little hook that you put it in here and then you thread it. So with my threader, my needle threader, what I do is I hook my thread onto this hook right here and then bring it over straight to the other side and then push this lever down and, and then it automatically hooks up and then you just pull this out. And there you go. Now you're all set up and ready to sew. I had to bring in my assistant because she was getting a little lonely. Um, but I just wanted to leave with a few tips um, for you. So um, number one is if you can go to your um, local craft store or sewing store um, or even your community college and see if you can sign up for a sewing class. Um, it just helps kind of give you that confidence that you need when you have somebody there um, watching what you're doing and just telling you um, the little mistakes that you're making. It's not completely necessary, but it's just nice. Two is start with small projects like maybe a pillowcase or a blanket, something that's not too difficult so you can kind of get the hang of it. Number three is YouTube. Uh, when you're stuck on um, something that you can't figure out, um, if you're scared of doing something that you haven't done before, go to YouTube, um, type in what you're looking for, type in what you're having trouble with, and there's so many good videos on here um, that will help you with your sewing. Um, and if you have something that you're struggling with, just shoot me a, a message or a comment and I can help you too. 
Um, and then lastly, just have lots of patience. You have to practice a lot. Um, it can be super frustrating in the beginning when you're trying to do something, you can't figure it out. Um, but just don't get discouraged. Just if you need to take a break and walk away, um, do so and then come back when you're ready and have a clearer mind. I've had to do that plenty of times where I just walk away. When I'm not so angry, I come back and revisit it. So just have lots of patience and just keep on going and don't give up. Um, you'll get you'll get better and once you've done something once it gets easier and once you kind of get the hang of it you'll you'll be fine if you like this video like and comment and if you want to see more don't forget to subscribe to my channel